Today, we're gonna to show you how to organize and customize your workspace in Photoshop so it fits perfectly to you. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to organize your workspace in Photoshop. So we're going to start with our default workspace that comes with Photoshop, I'll show you how to organize it, add and remove tabs and show you how to get back anything just in case you close something down and you're not sure where it's located. So we're getting started in Photoshop. Now this is the essentials workspace. I'm going to go to window down here to workspace and then you can see I'm in essentials. Now if you need to reset a workspace at any time, all you have to do is go right over here to reset and we're just going to click reset essentials and this is how Photoshop will load for the first time. Now we have our toolbar here on the left hand side, we have our image open in a tab and then here we have all of our different windows and you can see they're kind of grouped together, properties, adjustment, library, layers, channels and paths. By the way, any of these windows that you see here in Photoshop, any of these windows at all can be accessed by going to your window menu. And here you can simply turn any of these off or on and they'll show up here on the sidebar. These are also where you can get to your application frame, your options, your tools, and your contextual taskbar. Let's go ahead and turn that on so we can start talking about that as well. So this is our default workspace that comes with Photoshop. Now, personally, what I like to do, I like this contextual taskbar, but I like to click right over here, bring it up there, and then I'm gonna click on this little edit and we're gonna go to pin that position so it always stays up there. That's where I like it personally. You can put it wherever you'd like. Okay, now let's move over here to the right-hand side. Layers, yes, I use those all the time. Channels, now this is kind of an advanced feature in Photoshop that honestly, I personally don't use that much. So channels, I don't need that to be visible all the time. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take this channels and simply click right over here on the tab and bring it right out here, okay? Now, these channels, you can see they're removed from my, from my tabs right here, and I can simply close this channels, boop, there we go, at any time, and now I no longer have channels as a part of my default workspace. Now, if I wanna get those channels back again, if I wanna use channels, it's really easy. I just go from window and then down here to channels. There we go, click on that. And it's just gonna show up in the last place that I put it. Now, let's say you decide, well, actually I'm using channels quite a bit. I want it back next to layers. All you have to do is click right here on this tab. We're gonna click and drag right over here. And you can see, I can simply put it right here and it's going to load up as a tab. I can click here and move this to the left as well so I can have my layers, channels, and path just like how I had it before. And you can see I can kind of rearrange this at any time. I can also take this channels and we're gonna bring it right up here and I can move it up there. So now it would be properties, adjustment, library, and channels, okay? I can take it at any time and move it right down here as well. And you can see I have it back where it was to start with. Really, really helpful to know. Any of this stuff you can move around at any points in time. You're not gonna break anything. Nothing's gonna be ruined at all. Now, the next thing you'll notice is we have a few different groups in our workspace. So we have our group at the top, color swatches, gradients, and patterns. Then we have properties, adjustments, and libraries, and layers, channels, and path. We also have this group with history and comments. Now, I can actually expand or contract any of these entire groupings out using this icon. So if I expand that out, here we can see our histories and our comments. Now those are in separate tabs and I can collapse them just like this very easily. I can actually do the same thing on the right hand side. On the very top, you can see I can collapse this and there we have exactly all of the same windows. And if I click on any of these, it will simply pop out. I can click on it and it'll pop back in again. Now, just like I was able to organize, let's go ahead and pop this out here. Just like I was able to organize here by simply moving any of these windows around, I can also do that if I click up this tab here. I can also do that by moving these around here as well. I could put properties above or below adjustments, and I could even move this. Let's say I wanted properties to be with layers. I could go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna pop this back out using this icon here, and then properties is down here with layers. So there's a lot of different ways you can change and organize these things. Now, oftentimes it makes sense to use this like to fit your actual workflow because a lot of this stuff, we just don't wind up using that often and we don't need it taking up valuable space. So how do we go ahead and customize it to your actual workflow? Well, let's go ahead and start by just removing some things that personally I don't use that often and we'll reorganize this. So you can do this in this full view or you can do it in your compact view. Either one of these will totally work. Whatever's easiest for you. Let's go ahead and get to your full view. 
this is going to be a little bit more common. All right, so starting with channels, you know what? We just don't use them that much anymore. These were, you know, back in the day, we used them a lot. We're just going to pull them out and then go ahead and close out our channels. Paths, this is for the pen tool. We're not using that that much in 2025 either. So we're going to pull that out and move it to there. Libraries, personally, I don't use libraries that much. Some people do. If you do, keep it in your stack. I don't personally use them that much. The color panel, I don't use this that much either. Not in photo editing. Maybe if I was drawing. Swatches, I don't use very much. We're going to pull that out too. Gradients, I don't use that very much. We're going to pull that out here. Patterns, I don't use that very much. We're going to pull that out here. And then if I'm being completely honest, my history panel, I don't use that very much. And I literally never use comments. So those are going to come out as well. So I'm stuck with layers, properties, and adjustments. And maybe I just want to put those side by side. So I'm going to take my adjustments and put those right over here. So now I basically have layers, properties, and adjustments all together in the same exact panel. Because honestly, these are things that I do use quite frequently. But maybe we don't want them all to be in the same exact panel. Maybe I want my layers, for instance, to be above and my properties to be below. Well, you can do that by simply uh, collapsing everything and you can create your own new groups. See, right now I can click and drag to move this between or I can create a new group. So now layers will be by itself and then adjustment and properties will be together. Let's go ahead and expand that out. And here we can see we have layers by themselves, properties and adjustments right there. I can even go in between any of these groupings and change the sizing here. So oftentimes, you know, I'll be using a lot of different layers. So it makes sense for me to have a larger space for my layers. And then properties and adjustments can be right here for me as well. Now, let's say you start working on this and you're like, okay, this is cool, but I, I find myself using a feature a little bit more often. I want it back into my stack. How do I get to it? Because I already closed a lot of this stuff up. We're going to go to window and then you can see that basically any of these tools that you're using, let's say you're doing a lot of type, for instance, okay, and you want your character panel to be visible. Let's go ahead and open up our character panel. Here we go. Now, by default, I've got it loaded here where it's going to put it on the sidebar. So we've got character and we've got paragraph, okay? Now, these two are really nice because if you use them together, you can get all kinds of control with your text. Now, if I want to, I can just take my character window and prop it back up here with my adjustments. And I can do that same thing with my paragraph. So I've got properties, adjustments, character, and paragraph. I can go ahead and push this over the side and I can say, you know what? I want to put my character and my paragraph on their own line. Let's go ahead and pop that back out. And then here we have properties and adjustments. There we go, paragraph and character. And then we have our layers way down over here. So if this ever gets kind of overwhelming, like when I click on properties, then layers is way down over here. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I, I don't want that actually. This is now, I, I want to be able to see all my layers at any time. So what we're going to go ahead and do is let's compact our view again, because this is just a really nice way to where we can see everything. Let's go ahead and take paragraph and character out of there. For now, we're going to go ahead and move that over to the right and then click on our layers. Cause I, I generally want to see my layers. Like I, all this other stuff, I'm okay if I don't see it at all, but generally I want to see my layers personally pretty much all the time in Photoshop. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine these together as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to open this up and you can use on these same little icons to open this up. I'm going to take my paragraph window and we're just going to put this here with our paragraph window. So we have both of these up. Now I'm going to go ahead and click right here on this top bar and then move this over to the right. And you can see I can actually push this to my second bar which I can open and close at any time. So as I open and close this, now you're gonna see I have all of these different icons that I can choose to be over here as well. Keep in mind, if I decide I can move any of this stuff over to the right-hand side, really easy to do. Simply click on character, put that over here, click on paragraph, put that over there. And then maybe this is what you want. You want your layers to be always open, and then you want your properties to be, you know, all of your commonly used things to just be in tabs right over here on the right hand side. Don't forget at any time, if you wanna just go ahead and collapse this, you could take your layers and then you could move this above everything else. Let's give it its own slot. There we go. Let's expand this once more. And then layers are gonna be at the top of everything that you do. Okay, let's go ahead and there we go. I accidentally put properties. Sometimes when you start moving things around and it doesn't like it actually do what you want, this is a really great time to go ahead and collapse everything I find it so much easier to just organize when you collapse. So let's go ahead and put that there. Let's put the layers back on the very bottom in their own space. There we go. And expand that back out. 
And here we have our adjustments, characters, properties, and paragraph, and then our layers right down below. So if you get overwhelmed at all, go ahead and collapse everything and then click and drag. It's such an easy way to organize. Now, let's say you wanna set up a couple of different workspaces for yourself. Maybe you have a workspace where you're working with type a lot, or maybe you have a workspace where you're doing photo editing. So let's go for your photo editing workspace. For this one, you might not need the paragraph menu. Well, let's go ahead and close that. You might not need your character menu. Let's go ahead and close that out as well. But properties and adjustments, you know what? Those are still pretty useful. And of course, our layers. And I also personally, I like to expand out my toolbar. So I see all of my tools just like this. And I'm going to put my uh, contextual taskbar right there. So this is a great workflow for me personally, where I'm actually able to work with all my layers. I have my properties for my layers, as well as my layer masks and my adjustments here. So this is really good for photo editing. Notice everything is gone that I don't need. I'm only working with my essentials. So let's go ahead. We're going to go to window and then down here to workspace. And I'm just going to go down to new workspace. OK, there we go. And I'm just going to call this photo editing. Fantastic. Now, this is my own workspace. It's what I just created. This is for me. Well, or for you in this case, you're going to set it up exactly how you need it. Now, you can actually customize your keyboard shortcuts. You can customize your menu. You can customize your toolbar. We just released a video on customizing your toolbar. You can customize any of these things and have them included in your workspace. Personally, I don't find the need to have different keyboard shortcuts in all of my different workspaces. I like my keyboard shortcuts to remain the same. But if you did want to do that, you could do that as well. OK, so we're going to call this photo editing and then go ahead and click on save. And now let's say you're, uh, you know, you, <laughs> I don't know, some stranger, whether it's the neighbor's kid or, you know, someone who was using your computer. Let's just say they come in, use your computer and, you know, they put this over here and then this adjustments, they're, you know, putting that over there and then their layers, they just put this, you know, down there and. You know, now we're starting to look like Adobe Premiere, right? Which, of course, you can get any, like, if you want to do this workflow, you can do this as well, by the way. You can take any of these and kind of mix them around, which is extremely powerful here in Photoshop. Like, if you're kind of using your layers all the time, you can do this. If you want your layers to always be visible full height and your properties to always be visible full height and your, you know, image on the right-hand side, you can customize this however you want. But let's say someone just came in, like, did all this and you're like, ah, super annoying. How do I just get back to how I like it? Well, you can just go to window. We're going to go to workspace and I'm just going to go down to where it says I'm in photo editing workspace. But as you can see, it's been uh, super customized. So let's go to where it says reset photo editing. I'm going to click there and you're going to see, boom, all of a sudden it's clean again. It's exactly how I want it. And I got everything where I need to have it. So this works really well if you lose something, like for instance, if you go to window, I don't know, maybe you have like your, you really like your swatches to be visible, but you like them, you know, kind of docked over here on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and put that over there. Let's say, you know, you close your swatches on accident and, and you don't know what you're doing. You could always just go to window down to workspace and then reset that specific workspace at any point in time and you're good to go. It'll bring you back to what you want. So creating your own workspace is really valuable and then you can reset it at any time. Now, another really handy feature is locking your workspace. Let's say you have a workspace that you like. You can go to window down here to workspace and to lock your workspace. That way you don't have to worry about like clicking and dragging your adjustments, your properties or any of this stuff. Like you actually don't need to worry about any of this stuff moving at all at any time. It's going to stay exactly where you decide to put it. You can still change the height of things, but you're not going to be able to like move this around. If I go to window, let's say I add back my character panel. OK, and I try to put this in here. There we go. It's going to allow me to put that in there. But then I can't pull it back out again until I unlock my window. OK, so that's just one more good thing to know is when you lock your workspace, you can add things to any of these tabs, but you won't be able to remove them until you go to window down here to workspace and unlock your workspace. And then I could pull out my character tab and go ahead and close that out again. The other great thing you can do is create multiple different workspaces. 
Now there is a workspace icon right over here. You can simply click on your little drop down menu and see all of the workspace that you've created. For instance, when I create YouTube videos, I have one called free tutorials. There we go. And this is how I have it set up. I have my navigator window at the top. Usually I put myself in that window and then I have layers and properties right under it. So you guys can see everything that works from there. So you could click here, I make some vertical videos. So I have this vertical setup where it's a little bit easier to see there. There we go, let's go ahead and click there. And then you have like your uh, editing. Some of these actually come with Photoshop and you can see they're a little bit, you know, you could always move these around and then save over these as well. So different workspace are gonna be working really well. Let's go back to photo editing, which is what we just created. I like everything nice and clean personally, but if you have different workspaces that you'd like to use, one for photo editing, maybe one for working with animations or GIFs, maybe one for text where you have your character and your paragraph menus up, that's a really great way to work as well. So as you're working through different projects, you can have different workspaces customized to fit exactly that project as well. Thanks so much for watching. That's everything there is to know about workspaces in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up and let me know in a comment down below what you would like to learn next. We read every single comment and we're making these videos based on your requests. And if you wanna learn advanced Photoshop, photography, Lightroom, check out Flurn Pro. We have an exclusive discount for you with the link right down below. Thanks everyone, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.